Kind of dug into everything. Jacob Unruh, the Oklahoman, he covers Oklahoma State and joins us now on 365 Sports. Jacob, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. So what has Oklahoma State done to kind of get themselves out of a hole, or is it they just kept doing what they do? Um, they did a little bit of what they, did, what they normally do, but I think it's a big thing is they got the offensive line settled in and Dalton Cooper went to left tackle late in that uh, um, South Alabama loss, and that solidified things. And now they're looking at you know a better cohesive unit that has led to more you know better blocking. And, and I think you can't overlook selling on a quarterback and a running back. You know, you got Alan Bowman, and Ollie Gordon, and they're both taking off in various ways. And I just don't think you can overlook that um, impact. But it really just starts at offensive line. An offensive line in the first three games, two and a half, two two and three quarters, whatever you want to say, was really, really bad. And now they've got that fixed. It's really had taken this offense to a different level. Jacob, with, with Alan Bowman settling in as the starter, um, I, I think one of the things, like nothing's been spectacular, but they it appears that they've adjusted the offense and the play calling to just uh, let him do what he's, he's really good at and not try to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, you know, I think um, he's getting more and more comfortable. Losing those reps early in the year and the quarterback battle kind of hurt, I think, and slowed him down. But they built this offense to where Bowman can succeed. Uh, he doesn't have to do too much. Um, you know, they want him to throw the ball away. He's, he's real quick to throw the ball away when necessary. He he makes adjustments. He, he runs better than I thought he did. But he's a game manager, too, at the same time. And he's not turning the ball over. Um, you know, Mike said today that he'd like to see him set his feet more and, and not have some of those off-balance throws because it's creating some dangerous situations. But um, for the most part, though, you got to be pleased with him because he's making good decisions. He reads the field well, um, you know, and he's being aided by Ollie Gordon, obviously. But I think when you look at Bowman, this is what they expected, a veteran leader, a guy that seems to rally around, that doesn't make a lot of mistakes and doesn't take unnecessary risks. Well, you mentioned it there, Jacob. The other part of that offensive equation, along with the line, that was, you know, that, that obviously was the starting point. But Bowman and, and then Mr. Ollie Gordon, the second, right? Uh, the last three weeks yeah. just blowing up on the scene. Uh, huge performances. I know he had, you know, the big game uh, at the end of the year last year against West Virginia. Uh, but how much of this was expected? And just how impressed have you been by what you've seen here over the last month or so from Ollie Gordon? You know, I, I, you, I expected a big season out of Ollie um, based on how he finished last year and the classes we saw before that. But I don't know that we expected quite to this extent where they're giving the ball 18, 21, 29 times in three straight games. Um, and he's, you know, last week was the first player since 1989 to have 100 yards rushing, 100 yards receiving in a game uh, for OSU. And um, the, the kind of moves that he makes and – with the football and his ability to catch the ball and the energy he brings um, has been really impressive. Um, and really the energy stands out to me because it seems like OSU seems to feed off of him. You know, that he was the closer in those first two games of the season when they won and was well, the closer to South Alabama, but you couldn't run too much because they were so far behind. They were throwing the ball more. And, but the more Ollie gets the ball, the better the team is, the better Ollie gets, the better everything gets. And so they figured that out, and they're going to keep riding him as long as they can. Now I think they're going to slow down at times because you've got to keep him healthy. And um, 29, 29 carries a game isn't going to be feasible, especially as much as he caught the ball here night too. So I think they're going to have some balance there, but you've got to ride Ollie as long as you can, especially as hot as he is right now. So as we're sort of here at the halfway point, things are starting to turn for the better for them. When you look at this offense now, what do you see that's still, I guess, a little bit of a concern? And, and just kind of how do you view them now moving forward? Is everything sort of settled in, or, or what are the question marks remaining, you think, still for uh, for them uh, in the long run? Well, I think you know, there's no question marks on how long the offensive line holds up. Uh, you know, Dalton Cooper got hurt there today. Um, Gundy expects him to practice this week, but Jake Springfield flipped over there, that side of the line, and, and filled in very, very well. But um, I just don't know how long you expect the line to hold up. Uh, throughout the whole season because there's going to be injuries happen, things like that. But um, I look forward, you know, that to be the biggest concern still moving forward and how Ollie Gordon holds up at this point too because you get other guys involved just to uh, keep him fresh. And so I think that's the biggest question. Um, and also I think you got to advance Alan Bowman more and get more out of him. He's not throwing a ton of touchdowns. you got to get more into the passing game. By the way, uh, Jacob, I'm not sure exactly when you started covering Oklahoma State, but – 
Uh, Ollie Gordon, and I brought this up, and I know that has nothing to do with Stillwater, but then again, it does as a workhorse. In high school, in a playoff game, he had 49 carries for 455 yards against Allen, where Kyler Murray came from. He wasn't there at the time. So he loves getting carries. I mean, most running backs do. Yeah. But that's something, if you did not know that, that's kind of a, a, a nice little historical nugget. Yeah, that's good to know. I mean, I, I knew he was a quarterback in high school and did a lot for his high school and, did, and things like that and, and loves sharing the ball. And he talked about it. He gets stronger the more he gets the ball. Um, you know, so I'm interested to see how, they, how far they push him because – He's a big kid, you know, six one, six two, um, can really run. And it was funny talking to Mike Gunny today. He said the biggest concern they had with him coming out of high school, and it was a big concern for I guess a lot of different programs was they're worried about his speed. If he has enough speed to play running back at this level, with he's answered that. And he, the, he was funny though. He said if anything, if he doesn't have the speed, we'll just put him a linebacker. So they uh, they had a spot for him, but uh, it's usually really working out a running back for him. What is it about Mike Gundy that allows him to navigate through the any kind of noise that ever pops up around him? You know, I, that's a good question. He's, I mean, he's very secure in himself, obviously. But um, you know, I think Mike uh, has created a bubble for himself in a lot of ways too, where a lot of the noise doesn't really bother him and stuff too. And and he's got security. I mean, that contract, I think can allow him to kind of navigate through a lot of stuff in mm-hmm. general because it's kind of a lifetime good deal at this point. And um, the buyout's really high. And um, not that I'm saying that's what he rides on there, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of security, a lot of faith for himself considering that, you know, he's about to be involved in his 400th game as a Cowboy on Saturday as a player or coach. And so um, that's a huge milestone. And that just kind of, you know, gives, you know, plays into the longevity and the value of gunning to this program because he came here in 1986, he's a hot shot quarterback from Midwest City, played four seasons, uh, made an impact there, um, and then now he's turned this program, you know, he had him back there on some winning seasons, and now he's he's brought even more to the program. So I think, you know, when he, you know, he faces tough scenarios, stuff like that, um, he's been there, done that at this point, OSU, and knows how to get through it. How is the defense holding up in your mm-hmm. estimation? I know there were some moments, uh, you know, last game, but they were pretty uh, – good against a very stout Kansas running game. Uh, just what have you seen through them for the halfway point? I like what I've seen from the defense. You know, I think this three, three, five is good. It's good. It's not perfect. Um, and it's not going, it was never going to be the first season, but I like that. You know, that they, they do stop the run. Well, they focus heavily on that last week. Um, a couple of those long touchdowns from Bean were to the same extent. And were for him extending the play and allowing his receivers to, to get open after five, six, seven <laughs> seconds, you know, and um, that, that was a little troublesome. They've had some some struggles in the secondary at safety, primarily. Um, some of that's injury related. Lyric Rawls is out for the year, and so now they're you know they're going with two really young guys there, Cameron Epps and, and Dylan Smith, and um, that's been interesting. Trey Rucker has really struggled in coverage at safety, but is really good against the run. Um, so they pick on the safeties a little bit, but they got a really good pass rush. They unleashed Colin Oliver late in the, the game the other night, who's the, their best pass rusher by a mile. Um, moved a linebacker and. Uh, he's adjusted well. Nick Martin's been a really big surprise and uh, pleasant surprise, really, for OSU at the middle linebacker position. And um, you know, had 17 tackles against Kansas State. So he's, you know, they're getting the right pieces there in defense. I like when the defense is moving. Uh, they can just get the safety position kind of lined out. Jacob, thank you for your time. Uh, again, from the Oklahoman on 365 Sports. Craig, one more? Yeah, Jacob, I mean, just what's kind of the, the, the twist in the wind of the emotions surrounding the, the team as a whole? I know that there was a great crowd the other night. Just how is this kind of this little, you know, little pocket of positivity? How has this maybe changed the perception? Um, and, and moving forward, looking at that schedule with all those newbies uh, to the Big 12 that are on that second half. I know Bedlam's still there as well, but mm-hmm. are, are thoughts changing dramatically or slightly less than dramatic as far as the expectations go now the, the rest of the way? Um, I think they changed a little bit. I'm not sure. I think there's still some uh, hesitancy for some fans to get fully bought in yet just because um, they want to see how this can continue. They know Bedlam's looming, things like that. Um, and they know how last season ended after they had midway point. So right. uh, I think at this point, you know, I think there's some skepticism, but I think there's a lot more excitement than especially there was at the South Alabama and Iowa State losses. But, and you know, this is kind of the revenge tour. You know, they lost to Kansas State in an embarrassing way last season. They lost to Kansas in a similar, similar, similarly embarrassing way. Um, they lost to West Virginia. They played Saturday last season, too. So this is kind of the revenge tour right now for OSU, and fans are getting fired up about that. 
Jacob, thank you. Appreciate you jumping on with us. Appreciate your time, Jacob. Unruh, the Oklahoman, covers Oklahoma State. They've won a couple in a row. And now all of a sudden, West Virginia coming up this week. And that you, you look, 